Hey, what's up? Coach Kyle here. And if you don't want to have porta potty problems pre-race, watch this video. We're going to talk about the low residue or the low fiber diet. Uh, it's a, just a little dietary manipulation strategy you can put into place the date or two before a, a long distance event to fingers crossed to hopefully reduce your chances to reduce your weight to reduce your chances of having a needing a porta potty stop during the race uh, you know in a couple of weeks I'm gonna go for a sub three hour marathon I don't want to have to stop during the race to poop um, <laughs> I don't want to have to worry about it pre-race uh, so this is one good way to potentially reduce your chances of having to just deal with more than one bathroom stop during on you know during race morning so just going I have some details some information here below on my computer and I want to just go through them talk to tell you the important information you need to know and then uh, towards the end I'll talk about my exact kind of protocol for a low fiber pre marathon diet so basically fiber it's a part of fruit vegetables grains and it's not easily digested by your body a low fiber diet restricts those foods as a result the amount of undigested material the fiber that passes through the large intestine is limited and stool bulk is lessened so a big part of your poop is just fiber uh, so if you reduce that you reduce the amount of poop you have in your system um, and it passes through a little quicker a little easier so if you're a doctor you might say purposes of this diet are if you have a narrowing of the bowel due to, due to a tumor you've had bowel surgery you're having radiation treatment that damages the digestive tract now if you're a running coach I'm gonna say if you have a marathon tomorrow uh, you might want to reduce your fiber intake the day before and that's gonna reduce potentially your weight because you're gonna have you know less bulk of undigested food in your body and any you know, over any you know, maybe maybe a pound and you know but over 26 miles that could be that could be the difference between Boston qualifying and not uh, uh, we're going we're going for seconds here people uh, I am anyway I'm you know I'm just thinking out loud here the number two thing is and this is most important uh, doing this low fiber diet the day the two days before a marathon a half marathon will s re simply reduce your chances of having to poop twice before the race having to poop during the race uh, we don't have time for that so diet details this is from the Mayo Clinic this is something I I wanted to read to you so a low fiber diet limits the types of vegetables fruits and grains you can eat occasionally your doctor may also want you to limit the amount of milk and milk products in your diet diet milk doesn't contain fiber but it may contribute to discomfort or diarrhea so if you've ever noticed uh, problems with milk and your stomach your GI tract uh, you might want to re reduce that just in general but especially the day before the race um, Blah, blah 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 blah. So foods that are generally allowed on a low fiber diet are white bread without nuts and seeds, white rice, plain white pasta, crackers, refined cereals such as cream of wheat, or cold cereals with less than one gram of fiber. So that's kind of how I, if I'm looking at a food label and you see fiber, uh, if it says one gram or less, I would consider that a low fiber uh, option. Um, it says canned or well-cooked vegetables and fruits without skins or seeds so a can of like a fruit cocktail is low fiber uh, in the can um, tender meat poultry fish eggs tofu milks cheese butter margarine oils salad dressings without seeds etc so things to avoid so things you might want to avoid the day before a big race are whole wheat whole grain bagels cereals pastas brown rice wild rice uh, quinoa barley dried fruits raw fruit so basically uh, we're eating like we're eating junk food we're eating bad versions of good food that on a low fiber diet so we're not going for health 
the day before your marathon. We're going for, I don't want to have to stop and poop during the, my marathon. Um, so, you know, it's not a healthy diet, but it's going to probably serve you better during those, you know, three to five hours uh, that you're racing a marathon or, you know, during the 20 hours you're doing an ultra. Uh, so for, from another paper, I think it was called nutritional strategies for endurance athletes. Part of it was the low residue diet. Uh, so this says, I'm going to read this. It says prior 90 minutes prior to endurance events, athletes should ingest 10 to 20 grams per kilogram per day of prior to prior to 90 minutes I, I read that wrong prior to 90 minutes of endurance events so basically before if you have a half marathon or longer the day before uh, you should carb load so and I've talked about this before uh, eat 10 to 12 grams per grams of carbs per kilogram per day of carbohydrates during the 36 to 48 hours pre-race so during the two days before you want to eat a lot of carbs so one way I really like to do that is drink apple juice or orange juice without pulp. And that's a good, easy way to get a lot of carbs in. And remember, like I said, a lot of these low fiber foods are white pasta. Um, you could do like a white pasta and a sauce. Uh, what did I do? Pancakes. I made homemade pancakes the day before my last long run. And I pooped right before the, the run. Didn't poop again during the run. Hallelujah. Normally with my habitual diet, I'm a, you know, I'm a vegan most days. Vegan-ish is how I say, you know, if I go out to a restaurant and there's something cooked with butter, I'm not going to not eat it. But um, usually I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. So I, I eat a lot of fiber. So typically I'll poop in the morning. We're getting into too, too much information here, zone here. But usually I'll poop uh, right away in the morning after maybe with a cup of coffee. Um, and then literally what I do like every Friday I go meet a client and work her through a track workout. I literally run a half mile or a mile loop here, come straight back home, poop, and then go. Almost every time. So if I'm doing a long run, basically every time I, before I do a long run, I do a little mile loop, uh, come right back here and poop for a second time that day. Um, you know, and yeah, it's like seven in the morning, maybe, but, um, this time, uh, pancakes, white bagels, <laughs> you know, white pasta, white rice, that type of food. Uh, I had a canned fruit cocktail the day before, very little fiber the day before my last long run. Uh, I pooped before, I pooped the before with some coffee and totally fine for the rest of the run. So, uh, it works that like that it works so advantages to reduce the risk of gut issues during the race that's also very important not only are we talking about reducing your chances of having to stop during the race or stand in line at the porta potty with five minutes to go before your race starts uh <laughs> we don't want to do that either that is stressful so this reduces the chances of that but also reduces the chances of gi distress during the event uh, it says to reduce the bowel content to about 500 grams and to partially offset the mass of the additional muscle, glycogen, and stored water. Disadvantages. Lack of food variety. Yeah, I ate pancakes and white bagels the day before my long run. Uh, you know, boring, que fome. Uh, Short-term reduction in dietary quality and micronutrient density. Like I said, not the healthiest diet, but during... A marathon for a marathon we're not looking to you know get all of our micronutrient daily recommended values we're trying to just not poop our, our shorts or not have to stop and poop in a porta potty uh, discomfort due to lower satiety and hunger yeah it's not the most uh, satisfying food I do love pancakes so that wasn't so bad but the bagels they're just it's just kind of boring like normally I maybe put some uh, peanut butter or uh, berries on my pancakes. And these were just pancakes, homemade pancakes, so better than your normal pancake. And um, uh, real maple syrup. So not exciting, but it did the trick. Uh, so implementation here. So this says, you know, white bread, white breakfast cereals, white rice, pasta, noodles, and potatoes. Uh, Pulp-free fruit juice, sugary drinks. And that's again, like that juice, the fruit juice is a good way to get your carb intake way up 
for the carb loading uh, and you're not getting in a ton of fiber, pulp free. Uh, cakes, yes. <laughs> I joke about this, but it's true, but you know, have some cake the day before a race. It's high carb, low fiber, perfect. <laughs> sports products, sports drinks, uh, uncooked fruits and vegetables should be avoided. Uh, what else? Cooked versions can be added in modest amounts to make up meals or menu items. Pureed fruit and applesauce or mashed pureed vegetables. Um, and it says, the optimal period of implementation of the pre-race low fiber diet is almost is also highly variable and ranges from 24 to 72 hours depending on individual gut transit times um so i did it for one day and it worked now before my marathon i might start the night before so a day and a half before the race like not just not have a ton of fruit vegetables etc uh from like evening on and then it's the day before the race and then it's race day so uh, like pancakes are very simple you know you just make a bunch of pancake batter and you can have that with some real real not that aunt jemima crap real maple syrup so that works really well um po white pasta with some sauce easy you can make it beforehand easy you know make it the day and a half prior save your leftovers and have that you know which is white pasta with some sauce uh for dinner the night before the race. Make some pancakes and have those for lunch or breakfast or both. Um, white bagel with some cream cheese. I had a, some plain white bagels with some vegan cream cheese the day before and the morning of my last long run and it worked perfectly and it's easy. You know, you can make a bagel, put some cream cheese in there, put it together and st stuff it in your pre-race bag. Easy peasy pre-race breakfast. So. Um, that's the low fiber, the low residue diet. I highly recommend it. Uh, it has worked for myself. It's worked for my athletes. And, you know, we, we spend months training. My athletes spend hundreds to thousands of dollars investing in me, helping them get to their big event. They've told their friends, no, I can't go out tonight. They've told their spouse, sorry, I gotta get up early. Uh, I can't go to this event because I've got to do my long run. Uh, we've sacrificed, we've invested, and doing this little thing for the 36 hours pre-race can make or break your event. So, you know, you go through this entire three, five month process, all this energy, money is invested in this, and here's one more thing you can do to hopefully make it the best run you can possibly have. So if you have any more questions or comments, please let me know, drop them below. And as always, you keep running, I'm gonna keep coaching.